Es que ricasco la so a uh, a Razal León to my friends in Euskadi and uh, Egunon here in the United States for most of us from Central Time to, to Pacific Time. Uh, I, I can't tell you how excited I am to be with you today. Uh, Olaso is absolutely right that I um, take my, my Basque origin very, very much to heart. I'm wearing my, my Basque, um, uh, Basque country, uh, Meikurriña and, and uh, Old Glory pin on my, on my heart. And uh, even in my office here in the Texas Capitol, I, I keep um, a photograph with my longtime friend, Miguel Larrañaga from the Eibar uh, Football Club Foundation, uh, who was nice enough to host me not too long ago. I try to come back to Euskadi every, uh, every summer when they let me in, <laughs> when there's, a, when there's a, not a pandemic raging, and I hope to be able to return and see many of you then. Uh, I, I can't tell you uh, how proud it made me to listen to the prior, uh, to the prior uh, speakers talk about uh, Basque identity, Basque business, and so I'd like to visit with you today a little bit about uh, a sort of approaching Euskadi and the diaspora from a political mindset. I, I, I will, I, I failed to, to mention a moment ago, um, Miquel, my longtime friend, Miquel Bursaco, uh, I send you my greetings and also to my friends at the Sabido Arana Foundation. Thank you for helping put this together. Uh, I was scrolling through the images of, of, of people to try to see who, uh, who I knew and might have met, and there are a lot of familiar friends and, and faces on this Zoom. I, I wanna start by saying that um, everything in life is politics. And I, that's gonna be sort of the point of departure of, of my discussion about how the Basque country can project a much more robust image in the United States. And political influence for, for the Basque country um, is gonna come through advocacy, business and culture, and, and, and what, I, what I noted as the other speakers were talking about is, is the vast infrastructure that we have uh, in, in the diaspora to achieve that. Um, and it is oftentimes that, the, that the, the, the diaspora holds on to Basqueness in ways that are even more intense than, than, than the home country uh, in, in terms of customs and, and uh, images of the past are very, very emotional to many of us in, in, the, uh, in the diaspora. And even though um, my, my first name is Rafael and uh, I have the, the old Castilian spelling on my last name, I wanna let people know a little bit about my, my personal history. My father came to the United States uh, at 19 years old on an Italian ship called the Conte Biancamano. He had left uh, home at 15 from Marquina Gemein and had gone to first Zaragoza to play Hialeah. Then he went to Napolis, and then he got a contract to play in the United States, and that's what brought him here. His, uh, his father, Claudio eh, Anchia, is from Mayavia. Really, uh, we are descendants of El General Longa. Uh, Longa is Francisco Tomas Anchia and E. Urquidi. Uh, and, and so the Anchia name really comes from the side of a mountain in, in and around Mayavia. Uh, the, and, 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 so, and then my, my, uh, my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, Simona Garrachana, uh, is also from in and around Marquina as well. On my mother's side, it's a little bit different. Uh, my paternal grandfather, Justino Michelena, uh, is from Eibar, and that's why I, I root for both, uh, for all Basque soccer teams in La Liga, for sure. But Eibar, as being a, a, the quintessential underdog in a town of 27,000 people and having a team in the first division is very, very close to my heart, in part because my, my, my grandfather literally was an armero. He, he was an engraver of escopetas. Uh, he, used to, he learned a trade as a young man to engrave guns, and that carried him uh, to the United States ultimately. And I'll, I'll walk you through that. Um, he was also a highlight player. So he played in Cuba and Mexico City and, uh, and ultimately between his, his art of highlight and his art of being an engraver, that's what brought him to the new world and ultimately to the United States. Now, my maternal grandmother is from Iparralde. She's from Sibur. And Catarina Michelena, uh, she was Catalina Durillo. Uh, Durillo. Uh, she came to fight on the front during the Spanish Civil War and was a nurse and a teacher 
And that's where she and uh, my grandfather fell in love on, on the front. It's a really beautiful story, some of which is, is, is sort of metaphorically chronicled in that, in that beautiful um, uh, documentary called The Mexican Suitcase that I hope many of you have seen it because it really chronicles the path of, of the, my mother's side of the family from Euskadi into the, uh, 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 the refugee camps uh, in, in France and then to Mexico where my mother was born. So uh, we, the two speakers ago, we talked about identity. So for me, identity is, is a multi-layered. I am 100% I am Basque, um, de, de, de los cuatro costados, as, as we might say. And, and at the same time, I have a, a, an affinity and, a, and an important connection to Mexico because my mother was born and raised there. And because of the, of the kinship relationships, commercial relationships that all occur between where I live now, Texas, and our number one trading partner, Mexico. So those layers of identity are very important to me and to many, uh, many others in, um, in Mexico as well. Basqueness in Mexico, I have come to learn, is a very important defining characteristic and one I'll return to uh, in my talk. Um, I, I'd like to say that when we think about projecting Basqueness uh, into the United States and strengthening relationships, I started at the outset by saying, um, uh, politics is everything. So I will begin with a discussion of government. Um, a Basque delegation, I believe, must unavoidably be in Washington, D.C. We must have the ability to have a, a um, for lack of a better term, I'm just going to say a Basque ambassador who is able to uh, engage with not only diplomatic corps, but also project Basque priorities on Capitol Hill. Um, this person would need to be uh, uh, registered under the Foreign Agents Registration Act in the United States, but um, it is very important that that, that that person has a diplomatic posture and also a Basque trade and investment role. Cultural attache would, would, would be a natural as well, and we saw the, the massive success of uh, the projection of the Basque con uh, country on the mall in the U.S. Capitol uh, with the Smithsonian event that occurred just a few years ago, which I, I must say was a smashing, smashing success. I cannot, it exceeded even, even my highest expectations and I'm, I'm so grateful for the Basque country to do, for doing that. The, uh, the important part of that cultural engagement is that it needs to be followed by a governmental and also non-governmental um, uh, presence. So governmental is very, very important. I'll, I'll, I'll pivot to non-governmental. It's important to design a Basque presence um, uh, in, in the form of a 501c3 and a 501c4. Those are numbers that may not be familiar to people, but 501c3 is really um, uh, what, we, what we use as the designation for una, una sociedad sin fin de lucro. Uh, and then, uh, and, and that is purely nonprofit activities. And then a, a 501c4 is a sociedad sin fin de lucro que también tiene la habilidad de hacer cabildeo. So um, that has an advocacy piece to it. And uh, so the formation of a Basque American society, there is the infrastructure that exists for this type of activity in the cultural space with NABO. I mean, that is an important um, infrastructure in the Western United States, especially that, um, that we can build on. But a Basque American society that is, that, that is a basically US-based council of prominent Basque Americans and members of the diaspora who are well-connected in business and, um, and you know, literature, the arts, et cetera, uh, could, be, it could be very, very powerful. And, and while we, we might wanna have that based in the United States, it's important that that also serve as a conduit to the Americas. Again, I will reiterate, Basqueness in places like Mexico uh, in places like, like Chile, in places like Argentina, where, where when I've traveled on business is a very important cultural connection. Um, and so that Basque, Basque American society, while we might call it Basque American and have it anchored in the United States, simply because of the prominence of the United States, we should think about it as the Americas, as opposed to the United States of America exclusively. Next, I'll pivot to uh, another sort of concrete example and and when, when I think about the Smithsonian events, um, when, uh, when, when the Basque country was uh, prominently projected on the US mall, I know that that was largely funded by many of the uh, multinational Basque companies. 
So the next thing I would suggest is having a U.S. style chamber of commerce, a Basque American chamber of commerce, where the officers would be of Basque companies, um, and there would also be officers of U.S. companies in Euskadi, right, to grow the to grow the links between the two, and that would be the voice of Basque business in the United States. There could be advocacy um, and high-level engagements again with government and business. I think that would be an important institution to establish. And then, uh, you know, returning to all things are politics, a Basque caucus that includes um, members of the diaspora who self-identify as Basque. Um, and, and I have ideas about how we could grow that, but, but there have been many uh, prominent uh, members of, of U.S. politics who have been Basque. And, you know, the Laxalt family obviously is, is Basque royalty, Pete Senarusa, uh, in uh, the former Secretary of State of, of Idaho. Um, uh, until recently, you had the Attorney General of Nevada was Basque. You have county commissioners and mayors in and around the Boise area that have been Basque. And then I'm, I'm sort of um, a, 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 an outlier here in the Lone Star State, but, but not exclusively. I mean, it's important to understand that, that Basqueness is most strong in, it, in the first generation immigrants, so like my mother and father, uh, they, they have a very intense closeness to the Basque country. And then uh, it's, it was preserved with me, and uh, I'm doing my best to preserve that identity in my daughters. But by that third generation, it begins to wane. And uh, it's very important that, uh, that parents, in addition to uh, institutions in the Basque country, work with groups like NABO and others to preserve that identity. And, and, and again, NABO's done a really good job of preserving that in the, in the American West. For other more isolated communities, like former communities of Pelotaris in, um, in Miami or in, in Connecticut, um, Rhode Island, other places, it is, it is much more difficult to, to retain those links. Um, uh, and so, but, but, but there are many uh, Basque surname elected officials from around the country. I forgot, of course, John Garamendi, Young Garamendi, who's very, I, I, who very much identifies with being Basque. But there are others that simply need the opportunity to rediscover their Basque. And that's when, when I, uh, last time I went to Euskadi, I chair uh, an organization called the Mexican American Legislative Caucus. And um, you know, for for members of the legislature whose names might have, and I'm I'm, I'm using these names, I'm making them Aguirre, uh, letting an Aguirre know and bringing them back their family crest on a keychain or a plaque, letting them know that they that their name comes from this place um, is very is profoundly important because in America, what happens when you ask a person where they're from? They well, I'm from Dallas, I'm from Houston, I'm from some somewhere, but in Siempre jalan las raíces. The, you know, our, our roots are always right under the surface. And, and letting people understand that while it may have been a, 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 a more tenuous or, or, or long term uh, part of the diaspora, it's really important uh, for especially Mexican American and other Latino elected officials to understand that connection to the Basque country. And so, as part of the Basque caucus, I, because you'd want to make it state and federal. I think it's important to develop some sort of fund, maybe it's through the foundation or, or some other mechanism to, to have key um, uh, local, state and federal uh, lawmakers to come to the Basque country, right? And, 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 and let them understand how Basqueness is, is distinct and separate from other ethnicities uh, in, in Spain and in, in Europe, right? Uh, and in France, for that matter. And, and, and that is a huge awakening. And then that in turn creates a, an opportunity for more business, more dialogue, et cetera. I'll tell you who does this incredibly well. There are, there's an entire infrastructure of, of Jewish um, serving organizations that take delegations to Israel on a regular basis. Uh, and, and they have begun to focus exclusively on Latino elected officials, taking Latino only elected official delegations there because they understand that while the transatlantic relationship in politics between maybe I would, I would offer Washington, New England, and 
you know, the UK and Western Europe has been strong over time, increasingly that 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 pole of inf of, of, of influence, that transatlantic pole of in influence is going to be um, sort of eroded, not not detrimentally, but just by definition. And we are going to see a, a more north south uh, zone of influence within the NAFTA or now the USMCA block. Right. And so that those those um, those original historical ties that we have, and I, I sit in Texas, which used to be called the state of Texas y Coahuila, and that had Basque governors named Biesca and uh, and uh, Muskis. Um, th that is going to be as relevant as a, a transatlantic uh, um, connection. I, maybe not as relevant, but more relevant, more relevant over time. Uh, and eroding a little bit that that extreme reliance that the United States has on the on the transatlantic relationship. And I know I'm going long. Um, two two other uh, suggestions. One is having a think tank, um, and this is really the intellectual uh, uh, pillar of of the program. Uh, we already have wonderful Basque scholars at at, at prominent universities in the American West, um, but broadening. That, that amount of scholarship uh, and, and promoting these scholars through a think tank, I think, uh, I believe would make a lot of sense. And finally, I, I think there should be a permanent engagement with the Democratic National Committee and Republican National Committee. Uh, and and the, the Basque country has done a very, very good job. Um, we have hosted delegations, I'm a Democrat, we've hosted Democrat, Democratic uh, delegations of Basque uh, party of the uh, PNV at, uh, at the, the Democratic National Committee uh, on a regular basis. I guess uh, starting with uh, President Obama's nomination in, at the DNC in Denver, then later on both at, um, at Charlotte and Philadelphia. And so that's something that, that should continue because the relationship network um, with the party regulars for both the DNC and the RNC is, is important. So that's I, I, all I would say. I say you know, the first step was fantastic on the, on the Washington Mall. It, it let us um, project to the world our, 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 our politics, art and culture and history. Um, that, needs, that needs to be followed up very, very rapidly with the establishment of these institutions to create a, a powerful cadence for the Basque country uh, going forward. So, um, Esquerri Casco and um, Moshubat to everybody.